Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with another Fan TV, man. Back at you another video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos, man. Let's get into today's topic. Um, first of all, thank you guys for uh, who actually came to the stream, watched the stream, you know what I'm saying? Uh, first time you know, live streaming the game or whatever. Um, interesting experience, it was fun. Um, you know, I have my daughter in the background doing a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? So, but um, it was definitely a fun experience. And um, if y'all like it, I would probably keep doing it, all right? So, uh, we want to talk about the game. We want to talk about the game, man. Ravens win 27-24, and uh, it's a lot to go over. So, I think that the first thing we got to talk about is we want to talk about the, the, the main stars of the show, right? Um, offensively, Lamar Jackson was a maestro throughout this game, right? Uh, Lamar Jackson controlled this offense. He controlled the tempo of the game. He controlled uh, the line of scrimmage, right? Everything that we talked about this offseason is what we saw in this game, right? More weapons for Lamar Jackson. Um, control over the offense. Checking into different plays. Control the line of scrimmage. Getting out the huddle. Having Lamar Jackson look at the uh, look at the uh, the defense. And then change it up based on what he's seeing. We saw all of that yesterday versus the Bengals, right? We saw every single facet of that yesterday, all right? Multiple times, someone about to come to the line of scrimmage, check the play. One time he checked it, um, he saw, saw what the Bengals in, checked it to a run play, got the Gus average, I think, a run play with about eight yards, right? He, he's, he did it multiple times, checked it to a pass play, successful. Um, I think that the first quarter was great for Lamar Jackson, first, especially that first drive. I mean, 13 plays, 75 yards, boom, marched right down the field. Uh, it's like, okay, that's the kind of tone we on, that's, that's the kind of game we on. Beautiful, right? Um, I thought second quarter was a little rough. He got a little loose with the ball, fumble, you know what I mean? But they got it back. I, or I think it might have been a penalty in that place, but the fumble didn't even count. Um, so the ball handling is a thing that is still, uh, there's one, um, drawback I have to say for the game. The ball handling is something that Lamar just has to clean up a little bit, right? Because he fumbled multiple times last week. He fumbled this week. Once he gets that corrected, we on our way. Right, that's that's the only thing I'm saying that I'm still a little like, come on, we gotta we gotta, we gotta get the ball handling correct. But um, okay, second quarter like like for the offense they slow down a little bit, it was a little slow. Third quarter they come back out on fire. I think Lamar Jackson like started to start the third quarter was like seven for eight, like ninety eight yards, and then uh, uh hundred fifty eight point three passer rating, which is a perfect passer rating. I think he might be one fifty seven. So he was like right there on the cusp of that, right? And then fourth quarter. He closed the game out, right? This is all on Lamar Jackson's shoulder, right? So, a couple things got answered for me that game, right? One, obviously, Lamar Jackson can run his office. I didn't have any doubt about that. The one thing I did want to know is that we always wanted to say, Ty Mucken, hey, look, we know that you got the um, the tempo offense. We know that you got the passing offense, right? Do you have a slow down, control the clock offense, right? And I would say, I think that part of the offense is still a work in progress, right? When the Ravens kind of needed to slow the game down to control the tempo, um, the runs aren't the same as it was, say, when you had Greg Roman's offense, right? The Ravens, that really controlled the tempo, did a lot more jet sweeps kind of motions to get the defense moving side to side. We saw Duvernay get a lot of touches um, on jet sweeps and things like that of that nature. Um, so I think the slow down offense, when you need to really grind the game out, chew the clock, it's an offense that's still in progress. But the Ravens' regular offense, I loved it. It looked fantastic, right? Um, I was a fan of what they did. I thought Tyler Monkey really only had a couple of couple of questionable play calls, right? Nobody's going to be perfect out there, so I was happy with that. But Lamar Jackson is showing that all of this talk about throw the ball outside, can he do this, can he do that? Hey, listen, we got to get over that. This man is a superstar NFL quarterback no matter what you ask him to do. If you need him to run the ball, he'll do it. If you need him to throw the ball, he'll do it. So Lamar Jackson on the day. 24-33, 237, two touchdowns, no picks, pretty much 10 yards of completion on average. All right. And then running the ball, 12 carries, 54 yards. So almost 300 yards total offense for Lamar Jackson. And he was that guy that we've always known he could be. And it was a beautiful game for him, okay? Um, now that's, that's the one stand up performer, right? Uh, Lamar Jackson, the other guy that got a lot of, um, I won't say he was a stand up performer, but he played really well. And I was surprised by how much the offense went through him was Justice Hill, right? 
Now, at the end of the game, you can see that, you know, Justice Hill gets 11 carries, Gus Edwards gets 10 carries. But if you was watching that game, Justice Hill was on the field a lot. And he, he played well. It's obvious that Tom Munkin likes a running back that can, you know, is a little bit more proficient in the passing game. It has a kind of threat element to him. Because Justice Hill played a lot. And uh, he looked good when he played. So, shout out to Justice Hill, right? Um, let's see, who else? Um, on offense... Nelson Aguilar, man. Look at Nelson Aguilar. After not getting much uh, much pub last week, not getting many snaps last week, he comes back this week. Five catches, 63 yards, and a touchdown. That was great for Nelson Aguilar, all right? Uh, then, obviously, Zay Flowers had the big bomb over the top. That was good. Mark Andrews had a very, very solid game. Eight targets, five catches, 45 yards, one touchdown. Very, very solid game for Mark Andrews. First game back, all right? Now, defensively. When we get to the other side of the ball, man, who who made the plays on defense? Now, on here, they only got him credited for eight tackles, which is, I, I, I don't know, seems incorrect to me. But Patrick Queen was all over the field for the Ravens on defense, right? Um, I think there was I think there was three guys in particular that stood out on defense. We'll talk about Patrick Queen first. Patrick Queen was all over the field for the Ravens. They got him down for eight tackles, five solos. But I swear, every time I looked up, Patrick Queen was there, right? Um, I love what he did as far as if you take the progression. Hold on. <laughs> if you take the progression of Patrick Queen as a tackler, it's completely night and day. There was a play, I think it was Joe Mixon on the sideline. Patrick Queen gets him by the ankle and drags him down to the ground. If this was a couple of years ago, Hell, maybe even like, you know, early, early last year, Patrick Queen is trying to shoulder him, hit stick him. You know what I'm saying? This time, it's a solid wrap up, ankle tackle, you get it on the ground, right? Patrick Queen, when somebody got into his grabs, they went down. And that's something that is a big deal, right? Because if I had to say there was, besides pass coverage, which he's gotten a, a way, way better at that as well, tackling was something that had a, I had a real big question mark when it comes to Patrick Queen. Now, that's done with. I think he had, what, 11 tackles last week. Comes back with, they they saying eight right here. But like I said, I swear he was all over the field, Patrick Queen, really. Um, so, yeah. Now, the guy that said lead to, led the team in tackles, Geno Stone. You heard that right. Geno Stone had nine tackles, seven solos, and an interception. And he should have had a touchdown. He put that on Twitter that day. I should have had six. Yes, you should have. I don't know why he caught the ball. And didn't he cut back on Joe Burrow and just ran straight out of bounds? I don't know who he thought number nine was, <laughs> but he should have cut back and scored. All right, but besides that, Geno Stone is a immense player for the Ravens. A very, very um, underrated talent, right? Ravens got him on a one-year deal right now. I said this during the live stream that, listen, Geno Stone is a starting safety in the NFL. Somebody's going to give this guy a chance to start. Um, I don't think it's obviously I don't think it's gonna be the Ravens because you know they got Marcus Williams and things like that. But every time I see Geno Stone play in the in the in the um when Marcus Williams is absent, I never feel like dang man, I wish we had Marcus Williams, right? Now listen, I like Marcus Williams, he's a great player, right? He's a better player than Geno Stone, but Geno Stone is good enough to where he kind of covers that up, right? And he does a good job on that back end. It never really feels like Geno Stone is out of position too much. And him getting that play on the football, great. Um, like I said, he's a really, really good player. And I'm, I'm so happy he's finally getting a chance to play consistently and really show what he can do. Uh, this is the second year in a row he's had just he's had had this chance, excuse me, because of, you know, Marcus Williams' injury and things like that. All right. Third player on the defense I want to talk about. Jadavion Clowney. Jadavion Clowney. Had a really good game, especially second half. He affected the Bengals uh, when they needed to throw the football. Um, I always knew that coming into the season, Clowney would help the team set the edge, right? Set the edge, stop the run, be stout on that outside. I knew Clowney could provide that. If he could provide pass rush, that would be an added bonus to the team. And he provided pass rush on Sunday. Multiple times he had the Joe Burrow, multiple pressures, uh, QB hits. Let, let me see what they got him down for here officially. Hold on, let me get the cloning. Four tackles, three solos, one TFL, one sack, one pass deflection for the Davion Clowney is what they got him down as well as his official stats, right? Um, I enjoyed what your Davion Clowney did versus the Bengals on Sunday. I really enjoyed what he did. 
So if the Raiders can get that kind of production from Javion Clowney, a sign that I was already on board with because he could stop the run, and I was hoping he'd get something in the pass rush, it becomes a sign that's out of this world. Because the Ravens need an extra help at pass rush, right? Uh, uh, you know, they, they had Owe and Ojabo who looked good this season so far. But they needed some more guys. And Clowney is being right in that mix. So shout out to the Davion Clowney. He had a great game. So now let's that those are the guys that you know I wanted to talk about that stood out to me. And now we can just do a little bit of just my overall thoughts about the game, right? The Ravens went 27-24. Really, the game shouldn't have been this close. I thought the Ravens dominated this game from pretty much start to finish. They let the Bengals get that momentum with that with that uh, kick return. I'm sorry, punt return touchdown. Excuse me. That really should have been called back because he blocked them in the back. Uh, you know, the Bengals wide receiver he blocked them in the back, and they said they didn't call it because he didn't block them with enough force to to stop his momentum, which is which is BS. If I stand in front of you, it doesn't matter how much force I, I, I got in your way. You know what I'm saying? So he. He blocked him in the back and pushed him. So whatever. And let me get back in the game with that. And um, if I had to say one criticism of the offense is still red zone is not tuned just just right. They they did some good things. They did some good things. They scored um they scored down there a couple times. Um, but like in that second quarter when they really had a chance to put their foot on the Bengals' neck, we kind of sold for field goals, right? It just took even missed the field goal. So that. That, that didn't help as well. Um, so I had to be, you know, a little bit of critical. It would be the Reds on offense, a little bit. Just just a little bit, right? Uh, defense was immense all over the field. Defense was flying around, tackling. Um, the last couple of years, I had a real issue with the Ravens tackling as a team. This year, if they get a hold of somebody, they're going to the ground. Very, very rarely did a guy like Joe Mixon or Jamar Chase get loose. Uh, Joe Mixon had a one or two plays where he got loose. But besides that, the Ravens are tackling and bringing guys to the ground. I know it sounds simple. Oh, it's football. You're supposed to be able to tackle. You are. But that hasn't been the Ravens' MO the last couple of years, right? And uh, to see that come to fruition was great. So this game was a big deal, right? Not only do you win the game, you go 2-0 yourself. You go 1-0 in the division yourself. You drop the Bengals to 0-2, but not just regular 0-2. 0-2 in the division, right? Hold on. Truck passing by again. <laughs> only two in the division, right? Which means that the Bengals have, have to pretty much be perfect to, to uh, really win this division, right? They gonna, they almost going to have to run the table in this, in this division. They're going to have to win the next four division games. That, and I don't know how likely that is, right? Um, maybe they get two on the Steelers, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the Browns and us could definitely beat them again. So... That's a big dub all around. And, you know, uh, Joe Burrow, like, he, he aggravated that calf injury. I hope he's okay. I don't wish injuries on no players, no matter who team they're on. I hope they're all right. hope he's all right. But if he is if he is uh, forced to miss time, that's a, going to be a big deal as well. I mean, you know, we got to be honest here. So, listen, great win for the Ravens. Um, they were the better team the entire game and needed to win that game, and they won it. So, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Lamar Jackson, Maestro, beautiful performance. Um, this is the kind of standard we have for Lamar Jackson. The offense came in and struggled last week. This week, they were on their P's and Q's this week, right? Like I said, I only think the second quarter was the only quarter where the offense was a little sluggish and struggled. One, three, and four, out of this world, right? I, I, I love what the offense did, one, three, and four, all right? Um, so yeah, man, that's that's the Ravens versus Bengals. That's my recap. That's my thoughts on the game. Uh, that's the players who I saw really made plays and effort to stand to stand out. And um, we'll see you next week, man. You know, so give me your guys' thoughts on the game. Give me your stand up performers. You know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. But it's Gabriel. This is Fan TV. I'm out.